Today's passage is found in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verses 12 to 59. This can be found on page 1,523 of your pew Bibles. Chapter 8, verses 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The Pharisees challenged him. Here you are, appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, Even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid. For I know where I came from and where I am going. But you have no idea where I've come from or where I'm going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. But if I do judge, my decisions are true. Because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law, it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is true. I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness is the Father who sent me. Then they asked him, Where is your Father? You do not know me or my Father, Jesus replied. If you knew me, you would know my Father also. He spoke these words while teaching in the temple courts near the place where the offerings were put. Yet no one seized him because his hour had not yet come. Once more Jesus said to them, I'm going away and you will look for me and you will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. This made the Jews ask, will he kill himself? Is this why he says, where I go, you cannot come? But he continued, you are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sin. If you do not believe that I am he, you will indeed die in your sins. Who are you, they asked. Just what I've been telling you from the beginning, Jesus replied. I have much to say in judgment of you. But but he who sent me is trustworthy, and what I've heard from him, I tell the world. They did not understand that he was telling them about his father. So Jesus said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and that I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the Father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what, he, what pleases him. Even as he spoke, many believed in him. To the Jews who believed in him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciple. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered, We are Abraham's descendant, and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are looking for a way to kill me, because you have no room for my word. I'm telling you what I have seen in the father's presence, and you are doing what you have heard from your father. Abraham is our father, they answered. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do what Abraham did. As it is, you are looking for a way to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I have heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the works of your own father. We are not illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I have come from God. I have not come on my own. God sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar, the father of lies. Yet because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I am telling the truth, why don't you believe in me? Whoever belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. The Jews answered him, Aren't we right in saying that you are a Samaritan and a demon possessed? I'm not not possessed by a demon, Jesus said Jesus. But I honor my father and you dishonor me. I am not seeking glory for myself, but there is one who seeks it and he is the judge. Very truly I tell you, whoever obeys my word will never see death. At this they exclaimed, Now we know you are demon-possessed. Abraham died and so did the prophets, yet you say that whoever obeys your word will never taste death. 
Are you greater than our father Abraham? He died and so did the prophets. Who do you think you are? Jesus replied, If I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My father, whom you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. If I said I did not, I would be a liar to you, liar like you. But I do know him and obey his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. You are not yet 50 years old, they said to him, and you have seen Abraham? Very truly I tell you, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. At this they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. Thanks, Matt. Uh, Just make sure that you have your Bibles open. Keep it open on chapter 8. We're going to try and follow it closely. Uh, But also make sure you have an outline with you in your leaflets. Uh, There are some extra readings in there that will become handy as time goes on. Let me pray. Let's pray together. Father, we give you praise that Jesus is the light. And Father, we pray pray that uh, he would shine his light on us today. Uh, That, Father, we might see the world and ourselves and you and Jesus as you truly are. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. My old car used to uh, play a little melody when I started it. Uh, And I'd get a light show on my dashboard with little shapes of various things coming up. One in the shape of a light bulb. One like a foot. I don't know whether you've ever seen one of those. Another with an oil can. And, and uh, another one like a spanner. Uh, the one I liked most was the one that looked like a snowflake. Uh, if you ever get one of those in your car, it means that it's like below three degrees and your car is not really liking it at all. The one that made me worry about the most was the one that looked like an engine. You know, when that turns up, you got some serious problems. Uh, these little lights flashing, sometimes all together, with musical dings to uh, accompany them. My mechanic was not amused. But that's okay, I've got a new mechanic. No, no, no. You're not going to get my car, are you? And I got a different car, it's all right now. We'll find out today that Jesus is the light of the world, uh, but he's not, he's not the kind of light that looks like fireworks or glow sticks to entertain us. He's actually a warning light. But that same warning light also lights up the way out of danger. So when it comes to, uh, to John's purpose statement, remember we've been trying to memorize this, John chapter 20. When we read that, there is actually a tone of urgency in these words. So it's in your leaflets again. It says, John 20, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book, But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Jesus tells us about life in his name because our very lives are at stake. Now before we begin looking at chapter 8, just a brief note about the the, the bits in italics in in your book. Uh, There will be a note in your Bibles uh, that says something like this. It says, The earliest manuscripts and many other ancient witnesses do not have John 7, 53 to 8, 11. So I'm going to focus on verses 12 to 59. Right from the beginning, verse 12 gives us Jesus' main point for this chapter. uh, And it says this, When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Isn't that just an expansive image? Being the light of the world that's able to shine on the entire earth. We thought that 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 was something that the sun, S-U-N, does, when actually, in fact, it is actually the sun, S-O-N, the son of God, that actually does that. And when the true light shines, it shows that what we've been used to is actually darkness. So it turns out that without Jesus, we've been walking around with sunglasses on. You haven't seen the world truly until you see it lit 
by Jesus. Right from the beginning of the gospel, Jesus has already been introduced as the light of life. Darkness has been God's way of marking out a light that's in opposition to him. Jesus comes to not only enable us to see, but to live truly in his light, to live truly under God. And the way we can be brought out of that darkness is by following Jesus, by believing in him. Now throughout this chapter, Jesus will reveal what is truly going on, especially in response to the dark figures that are around him. So in this chapter, Jesus is going to shed light on two things. He's going to shed light on, number one, his origin and destination, and number two, his freedom. So firstly, Jesus reveals his origin and destination. The Pharisees begin challenging Jesus about his authenticity. In verse 13, they say, Here you are appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. So Jesus answers them in the terms of his origin and destination in verse 14. Even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid. For I know where I came from and where I'm going. But you have no idea where I come from or where I'm going. In the end, where he is from and where he is going is one and the same. It is the father, his father. The Pharisees have no idea of this, not not for lack of Jesus explaining time and time again in previous chapters. They just don't know. And if they don't know this, they're going to find a lot of trouble accepting where Jesus' authority comes from. His teaching, as we discovered from previous chapters, come entirely from his Father. And so his judgments come from his Father, in total contrast to the Pharisees who judge by human standards. Verse 15. Jesus' origins is his Father, and so his judgments come from there too. They are questioning Jesus' authenticity, demanding for witnesses, so Jesus gives them two. Verse 18, I, I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness is the Father who sent me. You can't get a better witness than that. No one tops God the Father authenticating his very son. Well, the Pharisees want Jesus to identify who precisely this Father is. Verse 19, probably to use it against him. They don't accept Jesus, which means that they won't know the Father truly. And this chapter is all about seeing things as they truly are. And the Pharisees don't see Jesus as he truly is. Now, not only does Jesus throw light onto the origin of his authenticity, he also sheds some truth on his listeners. That's what light does. In the last chapter, Jesus revealed that he's going away, remember that? And that these Jews were not able to follow him to his destination. Well, he repeats it himself again in this chapter, but this time he adds something even more pointed. Verse 21, he says, Once more Jesus said to them, I am going away, and you will look for me, and you will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. Well, the Jews still don't quite grasp the gravity of what Jesus is saying here. So Jesus repeats. Jesus wants them to know his origins to which he will return. Verse 23, he is from above, not of this world, in contrast to the Jews who are of this world, for they are from below. And he repeats the significance of what he's saying. Verse 24, I told you that you will die in your sins if you do not believe that I am he, you will indeed die in your sins. They cannot follow, they cannot follow Jesus to his destination, and they will instead incur the consequences of their sins. This is no mere ordinary death that Jesus is talking about. It means an eternity of condemnation because of rejecting Jesus as Lord and Saviour. This is what we've been seeing in previous chapters. It all rides on whether they believe that Jesus is who he says he is. I wonder if you're a driver and if you were to see a a car behind you with uh, red and blue lights flashing, I wonder what you would do. 
Would you do A, uh, drive faster? Probably not a good idea. B, stop to the side? Or C, slow down and then follow behind it to, to get to where you're going faster? Have you seen that happen? Yeah, I've seen a few of those happening. Well, when I saw those red and blue flashing lights behind me, I opted for uh, number B. <laughs> I stopped to the side of the road, wound down my window, looked up at the officer and said, hey, officer, what seems to be the matter? You get all formal when there's a police next to, next to you, right? And she says, did you realize that your tires are worn and winter is coming and the rains are coming and it's gonna get very slippery you'll need to change your tires, otherwise you're gonna get into trouble. I thanked the officer after wiping my, my, my sweat and got a new set of tires not very, not, not very long after. Wasn't she kind? Wasn't she kind to stop me and let me know that there's danger ahead for me if I didn't take action? Well, Jesus has come with his red and blue lights on and he's saying, do you realize you're in danger of dying in your sin? Do you realize you're in danger? Do you see the warning lights? Remember I said that these warning lights, they, they also light the way out of the danger? Well, we're about to hear about it. And it's tied to Jesus being the Son of Man. Well, the Jews, they're full of questions, and this time they ask Jesus to explain who precisely he is. Verse 25, something he's been doing from the beginning, yet they still don't know what he's talking about. Jesus' words end up being ones of judgment on a people who just plain refuses to know. They might not know now, but Jesus points forward to a time when they will know. Verse 28, he says, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and that I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the Father has taught me. They ask who Jesus is, and his answer is, he is the Son of Man who will be lifted up. They're kind of slightly foreign terms for us today, aren't they? The description of a son of man can just be a way to emphasize the humanness of a person. You know, he's really, truly human, son of man. But there is a particular human in the Bible who's described very importantly in this way. It comes from Daniel 7. It's, it's printed in your leaflets. It says, in my vision at night I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Isn't that amazing? That a human can be described in this way. This son of man is distinct and different to all other sons of men, other humans. Notice where his destination is. It is to the ancient of days. That is God, who does not have days. This son of man is endowed with privilege reserved only for God himself. The authority, the glory, the sovereign power, every person's worship everlasting dominion no one else no human is able to receive that no human will be able to approach the ancient of days and live except this one you want to know who Jesus is he is this son of man and he is the one approaching the ancient of days his father this son of man he is going to be lifted up which could possibly mean that he's being exalted. But if you've been reading John's Gospel in John chapter 3, then he's already told us that this lifting up will be an exaltation of a different kind. And it's got something to do with his forefathers. 
Now, I've printed a, a passage from, Rome, uh, from Romans, from Numbers 21. And it's the Israelites were on their way into God's promised land after being rescued from Egypt. They're on their way to the promised land when they become impatient and they started complaining against God. So to test them, God sent venomous snakes amongst them. They then turned away from their sin and God provided a way for their lives to be spared. So here's Numbers 21. It says, The Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, they lived. Two pictures from two different parts of the Old Testament coming together. John chapter 3, 14 says this. In your leaflets. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. This is the way out of dying in their sin. Look to the lifted Jesus, turn away from your sin, and receive eternal life. This would be the only way that you can come with Jesus to the Father. By believing in him. Jesus will be lifted up for them to direct their trust to him. But his being lifted up is no figurative term. He will be literally lifted up. When his hour arrives, remember his hour? When his hour arrives, he will be lifted up and nailed to a cross. Crucified, not for his own sins, but for our sins. That was the only way that anyone would be able to escape dying in our sins, the glorious Son of Man, to die in our place. Already we start to see people looking to to Jesus. Verse 30, even as he spoke, many believed in him. One of the features uh, of our Australian flag is the Southern Cross, the constellation of stars on our flag. That constellation of stars helped sailors to find their way to Australia. You can be anywhere in Australia and you would be able to find the Southern Cross in the skies. And if you are lost, then if you know how to use the Southern Cross, you can look to it and find your way to being found. Anywhere from Australia. Isn't that such a fitting symbol on our flag. Jesus, the Son of Man, is the light of the world, and he shines brighter than any constellation of stars in our universe, even the Southern Cross. When you are lost and in darkness, look to him, for he guides us out of danger. The cross of Christ It should have been the cross of all mankind. It should have been our cross. But Jesus hung there for the sake of all mankind. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we celebrate that light that has led us out of danger. We are those whom Jesus says, where I go, I will bring with me. I will bring you with me, for I have died for your sins. For us today, Jesus wants to make sure that we check that we have access to God. Remember, there were plenty around Jesus, and they thought they had access when they didn't. We don't want to be surprised by Jesus saying to us, you cannot come. We want to be clear about this. That is, access to the Father comes only by trusting in Jesus, by believing in him. Just knowing some information about Jesus doesn't mean that you have access. Just being around Christian activities doesn't mean that you have access. Both mistakes made by the Jews of the time. Doing what you think is good, that doesn't give you access to God either. You can't add Jesus to a religion and think all religions are all the same. The only way to have access to the Father is by believing in Jesus and Jesus alone. 
make sure that our trust is in Jesus. For those who are listening here who aren't Christian yet, then I might just say how, how great it is that you're here. Uh, I'm going to encourage you that if you, uh, you came with someone, ask them. Ask them how it is that the light of Jesus has impacted them. Because there are dozens, dozens of testimonies here about how Jesus' light has been a light to our very paths. I'm sure you'll be encouraged. Ask them. Jesus has been explaining how he is the light of the world, showing up what's truly going on with himself and the world. He's done so by revealing his origin and destination, and now he reveals the freedom of his light. There's glimmers of hope here when it comes to the Jews responding. Some believed, and Jesus addresses them them now. Verse 31, he says, To the Jews who had believed him, he said, If you hold on to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Plenty of people had been following Jesus, and plenty of people had stopped. But it is those who live according to his teaching who are really his disciples. Disciples of Jesus live according to his light, live according to his truth. This truth will set you free. It is this theme of freedom in the light which drives the rest of the chapter. While the Jews object to Jesus' words, which ironically displays the darkness in which they walk, they object because freedom implies what? Freedom implies that they're not free. They're in slavery. They claim they have never been slaves to anyone, being descendants of Abraham, verse 33 which I find kind of interesting because I'm pretty sure in their history they have been slaves to Egypt and to Babylon and now probably to the Romans, but it's okay. They feel very, very free at the moment, regardless. Now Jesus lights up how very little freedom they actually have. Verse 34, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Far from being free, you are actually slaves chained to your sin rather than actually being free to live as you might think uh, in order to please yourself without God it actually controls them and subjugates them they cannot follow Jesus to the father because they are slaves and slaves have no part in God's family verse 35 in contrast Jesus being the father's son belongs to his family forever And here, here's the gracious compassion of God. Verse 36. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. There are such amazing words. I'm going to read them again. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Only Jesus can free them from their sin. Only God can free them from themselves. Jesus, the light, shows up our slavery, but he also shows us the way out of those chains. Well, Jesus now increases the brightness of his light, and he shows the Jews who they've, who they've really been following, who their true father is. They think Abraham is who they've been following. They think Abraham is their father, verse 39. That is, they are descendants of Abraham, and therefore inheritors of God's blessings through him. But Jesus, he puts this into question. Verse 39 says, If you were Abraham's children, then you would do what Abraham did. As it is, you are looking for a way to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did no such thing. No, no, Abraham is not your father, You're following your true father. You can almost see the Jews' faces, right? They're getting red and they're getting infuriated. Verse 41, they say, We are not illegitimate children. The only father we have is God himself. Which is slightly different to, you know, when Jesus says that that his father is God. Here what they mean is that, that they are God's people, cared for by God himself and belonging to him. But if that were so, 
they wouldn't just be accepting Jesus right now. They wouldn't just be submitting to him. They would be absolutely loving him right now. But they don't. And that's because their true father is none other than the devil himself. Verse 44, you belong to your father, the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. They've been calling Jesus demon-possessed since chapter 7. And now Jesus has just flicked the light on just to reveal who's been in league with the devil in the first place. Their true father is the devil. Can you imagine video calling your father? One of those things that uh, we do nowadays, don't we? Uh, Video calling your father, you might have been regularly catching up with him every week uh, for many years, sharing your lives together, getting advice, uh, following his tips on life. But then this one occasion, as you're on video, something goes wrong. Something gets fuzzy on video. And, 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 and his, his image changes. And his voice becomes foreign. Because it turns out that it was a deep fake. That actually, someone had built a virtual person to look like your father who had been deceiving you. And then you check, you check all your accounts, right? And you check that your savings and your identification documents, they are all owned by this charlatan. Well, Jesus just revealed that that charlatan is none other than the devil himself. And the Jews are enslaved to him. The thing is, they don't look entirely unhappy about it. Which speaks about them, doesn't it? By their actions, they showed that they did not belong to God. Sorry, For those who belong to him, listen to him and his truth. By the actions of Jesus, on the other hand, he shows that he belongs to his father, for he honors his father alone, seeking his glory. Verse 49. In the bright light of Jesus, all is not as it seems. He whom they thought belonged to the devil belonged instead to God the Father. Those who thought they belonged to Abraham and to God the Father, they actually belonged to the devil instead. There is the twist to the plot that they didn't see coming. The remaining verses show us just how free one can be with God's truth. Just what it means for Jesus to make us free indeed. Verse 51 Very truly I tell you, whoever obeys my word will never see death. It's freedom from slavery to sin and therefore slavery to the consequences of sin. We have freedom from both. We are free from eternal death. Well, the Jews again question the claims of Jesus. They were asking before about who exactly Jesus' father really is. Well, they now get their answer. Verse 54, Jesus replied, If I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My Father, whom you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me. None other than God himself is Jesus' Father. And not only does Jesus call God his Father, he identifies himself as God himself. Verse 58, Very truly I tell you, Jesus answered, Before Abraham was born... I am. Before Abraham was born, I am. Do you remember when we last heard this? Chapter 6. Jesus identifies himself as that I am, the God who revealed himself to the Israelites at the Exodus. I mean, they finally get it, right? You know how they finally get it? Because they start picking up stones. They know. They know Jesus is calling himself equal with God. Blasphemy, they think but that's because they don't realize who he truly is. If the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. He is perfectly able to promise this because he is God himself. 
How brightly is the light of Jesus shining now? It's brightness that surpasses a supernova. For it is the blazing glory of the Ancient of Days, God Almighty, in the person of Jesus, here to set us free. Slavery to sin isn't just an issue for you know, Jews in Jesus' time. It's a reality for our world today. That is, if Jesus were to speak to our world today, he would still call people out of slavery to sin. God still sees people ignoring Jesus. He still sees people shunning him, hurting the very creation that God has made, hurting people. We are still in this world groping for truth, trusting in idols, trying to forge our own path to God. The more the world does that, the more it is tied to its consequences. It is God's condemnation. But there is a way out of those chains. Is there not? And Jesus shows us the way. Trust him. He is the only one who's been with his father and know firsthand what his father teaches and what his father is like. He is the only person who can tell us truth, who can shine that light upon us. The world at the moment is in handcuffs. It's in handcuffs. Bring those handcuffs to Jesus. Because he doesn't just have a key. He's got a chisel. And he will smash those chains apart. Jesus is the light of the world, revealing what has been hidden. He's shown that his light source is from his Father. He's also shown that his light, it gives freedom, true freedom. Today, brothers and sisters, we have God's light. We have Jesus. So can I say, bask. Bask in that light. That's why we gather together, is it not? We gather together to celebrate being freed from chains, being freed from death. We soak up the truth that Jesus brings. You know the truth that the world is aching for, that the world is looking for, that the world is searching for, can't find, because they're in darkness, we have it. We have it because God has come himself to us, to show us. We're not particularly um, selfish about it. We love to share this truth with others, don't we? But we get to sit in his arms as he promises to bring us to the Father with him. He looks at the Jews of the day and he says, I'm going back to the Father and you cannot come. But each and every one of us, if we call Jesus our Lord and Saviour, he looks at us and he says, you come with me. I'll show you the way. How brilliant is that? How about our lives in prayer? Father, we give you praise that you sent your light into the world. Father, you've taken off our, our sunglasses. You've You've opened our eyes, Father. You've enabled us to see truth. We see those warning lights flashing. And we know the, uh, the destination of the world. Without that warning light, we know that it's heading, to, it's heading to death in sin. But Father, we thank you that that same light shows us the way out. That Father, you saw our chains. And you've taken it apart. Thank you that it does not bind us now. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.